All right, guys, happy Tuesday. And we are sorry that we are late today with this episode. We wanted to make sure that we had the most up to the minute information pertaining to the Tate brothers. Yes, Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate. They have been detained yet again in Romania. The story is getting crazy, just absolutely crazy. Plus, later on the show, we have for you a prison reform advocate. He went viral because he appeared on Joe Rogan talking about the ills, of course, in and out. Thank goodness he got an, another opportunity to walk the streets because he's now been arrested for allegedly decapitating a man. Oopsies, maybe not the best prison reform advocate. And later on, we're going to discuss Lady Gaga. She is deeply upset because she doesn't believe that Dylan Mulvaney should receive any backlash for celebrating International Women's Day. Yep. All that and more today coming up on Candace Owens. All right, Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate, let's jump right into this. The first thing that I want to say, I'm always very honest about the fact that there is a pre-existing friendship here. What am I talking about? I've shared this many times, but my husband and Andrew Tate have been friends for years, and they were friends longer than my career has been. So when I met my husband, he was already friends with Andrew Tate, and I had met Andrew Tate twice. And just to be clear, he was always very kind to me. This was before he really blew up and became the eighth most Google person, most Googled person, pardon, in the world. Anyways, you guys know how the story goes. Last year, I went out to Bucharest to interview Andrew Tate. I was really interested in how he had achieved so much fame. He's suddenly so relevant, a topic of debate within the UK school system. They're banning Andrew Tate. Don't talk about Andrew Tate. Just an interesting conversation and dialogue to have. But of course, I caught a ton of heat. And the reason why I caught a ton of heat was because Andrew Tate within Romania was charged with human trafficking and forming a criminal a criminal gang pardon to sexually exploit women. Both him and his brother plus two Romanian women were arrested in Bucharest in December of 2022. Now to be clear, despite being arrested, there were no charges that were brought against them until 6 months later. So imagine that, 6 months after your arrest, you get charged completely backwards. And three of those months, as they were awaiting charges, were spent in a prison cell. I thought that was completely wrong, completely backwards. People were upset with me because they wanted me to have asked him questions about that case. And the truth is, I hadn't looked into it until after I interviewed him. And then when I did look into the case, I was very committed to the idea that what was happening in Romania to him were a bunch of trumped-up charges. I did an entire episode dedicated to breaking down the case And after looking into it, it was completely ridiculous. Honestly, that is my belief. I thought that Andrew Tate would be found not guilty in Romania of the charges that were brought against him. If you're interested in how I came to that conclusion, you are welcome to go back and watch the older episode where I break down that case. We will include it in the link in the bio on YouTube if you're watching this on YouTube. Now, What's happened since then is that things looked very much like they were going in that direction in terms of the courts. In January of this year, Andrew and his brother won an appeal. They were challenging Romanian authorities and their seizure of his assets. It was completely ridiculous. Despite there being no charges, they confiscated a ton of stuff, cars, money, 15 luxury cars, 14 designer watches, plus cash in various currencies worth an estimated 3.6 million euros or $3.9 million. All of that seized without having even brought charges. So yes, they said, you know what, we're going to reopen this. We're going to take a look at those seizures. Doesn't really make sense. And then on top of that, while they had initially had them in prison, they moved them to house arrest. And then from house arrest, they said, actually, you can move all throughout Romania. So again, things look like they were treading in the right direction for the Tate brothers until last night or this morning. If you're here in America, we woke up and wow, something has happened. And that something that has happened, well, Andrew Tate predicted it. Take a listen to a prediction that Andrew made recently. As we speak right now, and I'll say this publicly, as we speak right now, the UK is trying to put me in jail. England, because Romania has failed, so England has picked up. 
And England's coming up me with all this garbage, and they're going to try and charge me soon with some imaginary crimes. Maybe as well to drop the documentary. Well, there you go. Of yeah. course, because you have to. You first, you have to poison the public mind. Yep, yep. yep. To believe that you to are believe this that, evil guy. Right? Yep. So the UK is trying to put me in jail, and I'm saying this now on this podcast. Everyone, listen to me. The UK is coming next. Romania's failed. UK's picked it up. And as the UK try and put me in jail, I sit and I wonder. I say, imagine being a prosecutor. I probably shouldn't say this stuff. I'm just going to say it. And you get paid, I don't know, three grand a month or whatever, two grand a month. And you're sitting there just looking through my whole life for months. Oh, he made money. Oh, that's a lot of money. That must be a crime. Oh, a Ferrari. Oh, that's a crime. Oh, my God. And he has a nice watch. Crime. Like, and you're just sitting there. The obsession. And for like six months, just sitting there. Just analyzing Obsessed. Yeah. You're like, it's kind of weird that there's all these full-grown adults with this much obsession, making documentaries, trying to take me down, prosecutors in dark rooms mm -hmm. going through my life, trying to take me down, ex-girlfriend blowing up my phone who I don't reply to anymore. <laughs> like, everyone's just like, uh, uh, it's weird. And I just wake up going, there's so many other people's lives which are just intertwined with mine or obsessed with the idea of trying to be involved in mine. And I can add to that prediction when I can tell you going, going on in the background, because obviously, like I said, there was a pre-existing relationship there, is that Andrew had informed me that weird things were happening in the UK. Like, as he's dealing with this case in Bucharest, he has friends that are messaging him saying, oh, the UK government has knocked on my door. They're asking questions, or they stopped me to ask questions, asking if I've ever been sexually trafficked by you. T t utterly bizarre, again. So what ended up happening last night, or this morning, Andrew and his brother Tristan were detained again on Monday over alleged sexual aggression in a UK case dating back to 2012. Allegedly, four women say that between 2012 and 2015 that they reported Tate to the UK authorities for alleged sexual violence and physical abuse. And the Crown Prosecution Service, just to be clear, the CPS, that authority declined to prosecute him based on the evidence that those women had presented. So what happened next? Well, the alleged victims then went to crowdfunding. They publicly funded an effort to support their legal costs to pursue Andrew Tate and his brother civilly. So again, just to make that clear, the Crown declined to prosecute him criminally. And so they said, you know what, we're just going to go after you civilly. And that is the reason that he received a knock on his door and him and his brother are being detained. So right now, it's a limbo. The Romanian government has to make a pivotal decision and they will make that decision on Tuesday as to whether or not they will execute on the warrants that have been issued by the UK's Westminster Magistrates Court. Now, a couple of things I want to say here about how strange this is. First and foremost, we're talking about a civil suit. The amount of effort that it takes to contact Romanian authorities to issue warrants, what, to make him appear for this civil suit. I'm just not clear on any of this. First and foremost, despite the fact that there are multiple countries that, yes, they, they have extradition treaties, it takes the most extreme circumstances for one country to say, you know what, no, we actually are going to want to extradite on that. You, you have to be talking about a case where you're dealing with a drug lord. Seriously, there's, there's just got to be billions of dollars. It's Mexico. And you're like, you know what? We want to actually extradite that criminal drug lord because this case means a lot for us, to, to us. We don't typically see this. I don't know if we've ever seen this pertaining to a civil suit. Now, I want to be clear. I have always been very honest. When looking at the case that was happening in Bucharest, as I said earlier, it looked like complete fluff. It looked pointedly ridiculous to me. And I will be honest, I have not had the time to examine whatever case was brought forth from these women back in 2012 that they are now suing for uh, civilly. But I will say that just off the bat, it's giving E. Jean Carroll vibes. It's giving, okay, this is the man that we want to take down, and now we will find a reason to take him down. And we know that the court's will side with us. Exactly what happened when Eugene Carroll said, oh, you know what? A thing happened between me and Trump back in the 90s, and I'm just descending out of this fog, and I want to make sure something happens to him. And then the person, one of the people who founded LinkedIn, got behind her. You know, it failed criminally, and they got behind Eugene Carroll civilly, and then she won tons of money, more money than she was even asking for. It's starting to feel like that. 
So I'm going to ask you to park aside your feelings for Andrew Tate. I understand that some people think the stuff that he said, the clips that are circulating of him, are completely awful. And guess what? I would never agree with or condone any language that I disagree with or, 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 or web, a webcam business in general is counter to everything that I talk about in terms of me taking a stance against pornography. I'm, again, asking you to park aside your personal feelings regarding the morality of his business to ask yourself a question. Do you think what is happening to him right now is justified? Do you think that it is normal for the UK to be locking hands with Bucharest over a civil complaint? I certainly do not think it's normal. Here is what Andrew had to say following his release from his detainment last night. Take a listen. Unfortunately, I don't think many people in Romania understand, but in the West, in the countries that are owned by the Satanists, you move to a certain level of fame, you either put on a dress or you go to jail, and I'm happy to make my choice, which is jail every single time. My soul is not for sale, neither are my principles. We are well, innocent angry. men. No, we're very innocent men, and in time, everybody's going to see that, and we're very excited to finish this judicial process and get our next. Well, you are free for now, but uh, still, the Romanian court approved yeah. extradition to the UK after the trial is uh, It's very funny. <laughs> I've been asking the Romanian courts to go to the UK myself. I've asked five times and been declined. So now I get to go home. It's fantastic. So here is what I will say. Looking at this case and looking deeply at the case that happened in Bucharest, which, as I said, I don't think they ever had any legs to stand on, it does seem like this was always about the UK. My suspicion is that the UK government has a ton of power and they have wanted Andrew Tate for some time. And what happened was that in Romania, they got lucky. They had this woman who sent some text messages to her mother. Her mother then contacted authorities against her will. The woman then went and had, the young woman went and said that she just wanted to go to Paris and go shopping with her friends. Whatever it is, the moment that Bucharest made the arrest, my suspicion is that the UK government encouraged his detainment because the UK government wanted to make sure that Andrew Tate remained in a state that was friendly to the UK, Possibly he could have gone to the Middle East, you know, uh, and they would not have been friendly to the UK while they investigated him and they looked for something to hang him on. The UK government hates Andrew Tate. They made that clear. Uh, They are enforcing policies in the schools to not allow students to talk about him because he became that famous in the UK. Tons of young children, tons of young boys in particular, were suddenly watching his content, repeating phrases that he says in the classroom. They felt like he was too culturally relevant without being an individual that they could control. And you might think that that's ridiculous. You might think that that is conspiracy theories. You might think that what Andrew Tate just said there regarding, well, my refusal to put on a dress is the reason why they want to come after me, is something that is fundamentally ridiculous and and conspiratorial. I don't. Because of all of the topics that we have been covering on this show as of late, because of the topics that we covered regarding Diddy, because of what we have just discovered yesterday about Emmanuel Macron's non-wife, I would say, potentially Emmanuel Macron's husband, looking at that case and the circumstances and the media's refusal to report it. I do believe that, as I have made clear, all across the world, we are recognizing that there are blackmail rings and that the way that they are able to control people in Hollywood and the ideas that shape us is through blackmail. And so you have somebody like Andrew Tate who became remarkably famous. And again, I am not saying that there are not things that he has done in his past that he should be ashamed of. In fact, when I sat down with him and spoke about those things, he admitted that he was ashamed of them, that he was you know, 10 years younger or whatever it was when those clips were circulating. And he's not proud of the things that he says. People grow up, they transform their opinions. And my gut is that Andrew Tate, the person that he is today, is somebody that can do tremendous good. I believe that. I believe that, especially with the audience of young men that is following him. But he is not telling young men to behave like women. He's not doing that. In fact, he is saying the exact opposite. He is taking a stance against modern feminism, which has been twisted to be something that is fundamentally anti-man. He is taking a stance against men that wear dresses, encouraging young boys to make fun of those sorts of people. So whether you like him or not, he is bringing forth a culture that we know is not something that the elitists that are in control, the leftists that are in control, and yes, an element of it is in fact satanic. These satanists that are in control want to see catch fire. That has to end. So are they going to go back and relitigate every element of his history? Yes, I do believe that the UK government 
and really something much more powerful than the UK government, wants to take Andrew Tate and his brother down because they are unable to influence them. You can disagree with that all you want, but I am encouraging you to take a look at the case in Bucharest, to think that they have detained them for this long on what I believe to be trumped up charges, and see this additional case, which defies common sense that there would need to be any coordination between two countries regarding a civil matter, and then draw your conclusions. And that's all I'm going to say about that. When we say something is free, it should mean precisely that, free. No strings attached, no hidden costs, and no fine print to decipher. When you switch to Pure Talk today, you'll get a free Samsung 5G smartphone. There is no four-line requirement and no activation fee, just a free Samsung that's built to last with a rugged screen, quick charging battery, and top-tier data security. Qualifying plans start at just $35 a month for unlimited talk, text, 15 gigs of data, and a mobile hotspot. Pure Talk gives you phenomenal coverage on America's most dependable 5G network. It's the same coverage you know and love, but for half the price of the other guys. The average family saves almost $1,000 a year. Plus, with Pure Talk, you know you're spending your hard-earned money with a company that aligns with your values. Let Pure Talk's expert U.S. customer service team help you make the switch today. Go to puretalk.com slash owns to claim your eligibility for your free brand new Samsung 5G smartphone and start saving on wireless today. Again, go to puretalk.com slash owens and switch to my cell phone company. Okay, now it's time for some topics du jour. But before we get into our first topic, I want to remind you, just take a look. We are so close to 3 million subscribers. So if you're not subscribed, subscribe right now. You know, nobody ever asks me any fun questions in interviews. They're always gotcha interviews. How are we going to take down Candace Owens? I'm going to ask myself a fun question. Candace, do you have any regrets in politics, any stances you've taken that have radically shifted? Yes, I'm so glad you asked that, Candace. My biggest regret, you guys, and I'm not kidding, is that I supported the criminal justice reform bill under Trump, and I will tell you why I did that. I'm going to be completely honest. I was very green at that time, which is just a way of saying that I was very new to politics. Everything was exploding in my face, and I had never imagined that it would inspire so much hatred towards me, and, and especially regarding the black community. And, you know, I was being called somebody that was anti-black and hateful. So I already had that, you know, imprinted on my mind that this is awful, that I'm being smeared this way and I don't feel this way. But then the other element of it is that when this was pitched to me, the person that pitched it to me, by the way, was, was Jared Kushner. And I should have done my own research. So this is no excuse. But he just gave me the highlights. Oh, this, this bill is going to be great. You know, this is really about trying to reduce recidivism. We're really just trying to make it clear that when people leave prison, they have to have a pathway, you know, get jobs that will help them be able to restart their lives so that they don't end up back in prison because they're desperate. Like, that was sort of the pitch. Again, I should have done my own research and I should have read what was in the bill. And if I had, I would not have supported it. So I just want to own that. I was completely wrong. And one of the things that made me wake up to that is because one young woman uh, who basically had her sentence commuted due to this bill, I, I met her and she's a complete and utter psychopath and she's probably going to end up back in prison. <laughs> and then I read it and I was like, actually, you know, sometimes people should just be in prison because they're crazy. Anyways, I'm saying all of this to tell you this unbelievable story. So there's this ex-con who is friends with the woke New York district attorney, Alvin Bragg, and obviously they are pro-criminal justice reform. And he somehow landed an appearance on Joe Rogan last month. He told a very, you know, appealing story about how much he's learned and how grateful he is to be walking the streets again. Take a listen to Sheldon Johnson, a criminal justice reform advocate. It was at that moment where I, I really said, I have to change my life. I have to change my life. I, can't, I, I just can't do this. Um, I had a wife. I had family still. My son was growing up. Um, he was hearing stories about my so-called uh, notoriety, and um, I just didn't want to. I just didn't want to be that dad. Like I really was looking at myself and really evaluating and asking myself, like, "Yo, what the f are you doing?" I was still. I was smoking a lot of weed at the time. I was drinking um, jailhouse hooch, um, and I was at my worst. And I and I had to real I had to figure out how to get to my best. 
So it pulls at your heartstrings. You're like, man, I don't want him smoking that jailhouse hooch or drinking that jail jailhouse hooch. I want him to have something better. So to be clear, he was sentenced for 50 years for two violent robberies, but his sentence was commuted. He only spent 25 years in prison. What you're hearing there sounds like a man who most certainly had changed and the purpose of whoever got him on Joe Rogan get landing him that appearance is to make everybody go, oh no, people can change. Except as I asked, what if they can't? What if we're actually getting it right when we jail somebody uh, because of two violent robberies? What if the mistake is being made in having our heartstrings pulled at? And I think that would be kind of the moral of the story when you look at all of America today. We feel bad for the illegal aliens. Oh, no, nope, they've killed someone. Oh, they killed somebody again. Oh, they want free money. Uh, they want you to go to work so they can get more free. Maybe we should just stop caring so much as a society. And you know who is definitely now going to substantiate that plausibility that we should just stop caring? Well, the man that you just heard, Sheldon Johnson, 48 years old. He has been arrested again and charged. Guess why? He dismembered a body, allegedly. Of course, he uh, still has to go through the court system. He has allegedly dismembered a person. There was a body that was found in a bin and a head that was stashed in a freezer belonging to a victim named Colin Small, who was 44 years old. Now, why did they charge him and not somebody else? Well, they looked at some surveillance footage, which showed him transporting a large number of bags to and from an apartment. And the building's super had speculated that he was hiding something, not your average thing to just be transporting a large amount of bags back and forth. Neighbors then allegedly told investigators that they heard a victim pleading for his life before two shots came from the apartment. At least that is what those sources told the New York Post. Before the grisly discovery, he was spotted in surveillance images appearing to disguise himself in a blonde wig and transporting large boxes and trash bags. So he has now been charged with murder manslaughter, and weapon possession. So again, this is allegedly what likely happened is he got into an argument with somebody. He was not so reformed as people had hoped. And upon that argument, a man pleaded with him. He shot him anyways and then said, you know what? This is probably not going to be good for criminal justice reform, especially my job as a criminal justice reform advocate. So what am I going to do with the body? I'm going to put on a blonde wig and I'm going to dispose of it. And I'm going to dismember it so that people don't see me carrying out you know, a full body I put it into bags and boxes and get rid of it. It's allegedly, plausibly what happened, but we will find out. Again, my biggest regret is standing in line with criminal justice reform without having read thoroughly what was actually being proposed. Maybe if I hadn't supported it, that man would not have ever been walking the streets and given the opportunity to commit another crime. All right, guys, let's move on. Lady Gaga, man, I really, really, really want to like her based on her talent. She's tremendously talented. She's definitely uh, quite the performer. She has a tremendous voice. But it's just every time she opens her mouth about politics, I really, really, really wish Lady Gaga never had a platform. I really do. Because it's there's no way that she's not educated about why what she is doing is wrong. She just, again, says yes to the satanic cult of Hollywood and whatever initiative they are pushing. Anyways, let's get to the story. So we have Dylan Mulvaney. Obviously, that is a name that needs no introduction. Dylan wanted to celebrate National Women's Day by posting this on Instagram. It is a photo of Dylan and Lady Gaga, and it just reads, Happy International Women's Day. This photo was taken in, uh, I guess, throughout a shoot that they had together, and I will show you some footage from that shoot. Take a look. I promise you, if you put your mind to it, and you work hard, and you never give up, and you do not listen to the rejection, you can achieve anything that life throws your way. So you get it. She's platforming Dylan Mulvaney because Dylan Mulvaney is a hero. And Dylan has stood up to mobs just to be who Dylan is. No consideration for the chorus of women like J.K. Rowling who feel insulted by this, right? Because apparently we should care more about how Dylan feels than how tons, millions of women all around the world, billions of women feel about this. 
really, just the, the denigration of what it means to be a woman being called cisgender, which I'm happy that Elon Musk refers to that as a slur and does not allow it on his platform. Basically saying, there's something special about you women. Anybody can be a woman. Even a man can be a woman. That's, that's where we're at today. And we're having our voices silenced. I have to be careful in how I cover this right now on YouTube because they care more about how Dylan feels and how I feel as an actual woman. That's ridiculous. So obviously Dylan posting this was met with backlash from actual women saying, I, I, this is a day we're supposed to be celebrating women. Can we have this day? And so Lady Gaga hit back at those people. She wrote this. It's appalling to me that a post about National Women's Day by Dylan Mulvaney and me would be met with such vitriol and hatred. When I see a newspaper reporting on hatred, but calling it backlash, I feel it is important to clarify that hatred is hatred. And this kind of hatred is violence. Backlash would imply that people who love or respect Dylan and me didn't like something we did. This is not backlash. This is hatred. Okay, so we'll pause there. And you can read the rest in your own time. This is the reframing, right? This is not backlash. No, let me tell you what backlash would be. It doesn't, you, have to love, you don't have to love Dylan, know Dylan, or love Lady Gaga, or love her music or what she does. What you have to love is being a woman. <laughs> That's it. That's all it takes to get backlash. Are you a woman? Yes. Are you okay with the fact that suddenly your voices are being silenced and laws are being created and you know, policies, rather, are being created on platforms like YouTube and Facebook to basically deny the fact that you're a woman? Uh, yeah, I would say that we're pretty upset about that. Are we backlashing against that? Are we saying, no, it's unacceptable? Yes, because we should say it's unacceptable. It is, we should say it is unacceptable that you would hyphenate things and refer to us as, as cisgender. No, we're women. I just gave birth to three kids over the last three years. Don't take all of the elements and the beautiful things about being a woman and basically erase it while at the same time you will be the same kind of person. I'm speaking directly to Lady Gaga here that will speak out against the patriarchy. Oh, men. It's because of men we can't get anywhere. Oh, men around every corner. But I guess if a man puts on a wig and says they feel like a woman, like Shania Twain, ah, 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 I feel like a woman, then suddenly it's not the patriarchy at all. It's not the patriarchy at all. No, that's something else. And, and we're hateful for wanting to be ourselves. That's it. That, that, that's the big ask. Can we acknowledge that being a woman is something that is special and something that's different to being a man? Lady Gaga says no. She says that you are a hateful human being. So you guys can take that or you can leave it. And I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and leave that. Sleep is the foundation of our mental and physical health. You must have a consistent nighttime routine to function at your very best. So if you're struggling with sleep, check out Beam. It's not just your one of the mill sleep aid. It's a concoction carefully crafted to help you rest without the grogginess that often accompanies other sleep remedies. Several people on my team use Beam's Dream Powder to sleep better through the night, and they show up very much ready to work the next day. Other sleep aids can cause next day grogginess, but Dream contains a powerful all natural blend of magnesium, L theanine, and melatonin to help you fall asleep, stay asleep, and wake up feeling refreshed. Now available in delicious flavors like cinnamon cocoa, chocolate peanut butter, and mint chip, better sleep has never tasted better. And today, my listeners get a special discount on Beam's Dream Powder, their science backed healthy hot cocoa for sleep with no added sugar. Better sleep has never tasted better. Just mix Beam Dream into hot water or milk. Stir or froth and enjoy before bedtime. If you find yourself struggling to sleep, give it a shot. Get up to 40% off for a limited time when you go to shopbeam.com slash Candice and use code Candice at checkout. That's shopbeam.com slash Candice and use code Candice for up to 40% off. All right, guys, let's jump into some of your comments pertaining to episodes past, particularly yesterday's episode where we talked about Brigitte Macron. I cannot believe that this story is just now making its way to America, and I want to be a pioneer in terms of speaking about this issue. I do not plan on letting up. Some of you guys had more questions. You were asking, why did you say she has five kids? And yet you also said she has three kids. What I'm just to clarify, Brigitte, as the first lady, has said, I have three kids. But a deep dive proved that actually she fathered five kids when she was living as a man. So like a man had five kids across two different women, and she only acknowledges three of them now as the first lady. But the other two she still has a relationship with because one of them actually appeared at the inauguration. As I said, 
Read the full document. It is crazy. And I plan on reporting more onto it because there are also some huge question marks about who the heck Emmanuel Macron is. How, how do you become the president and the first lady of a country and basically nothing in your background makes any sense? That would imply that these individuals are being created and selected into these positions because they are easily able to be blackmailed. That, that's what it heavily implies. Anyways, I'm going on a rant here. Let me get to some of your comments. This person writes, it will be interesting to see how Macron and his partner will react to this post. When will Jean-Michel appear on TV with his beloved sister? Right? That's all it would take. Appear with your brother. If you're not him, appear with him. When will Brigitte's teenage friends also come out and talk about their good old times together? I'm going to go ahead and guess never. And when will photos of a pregnant Brigitte be published? This is a very creepy story, which could be very easily debunked. So far, it really looks like a big political scandal. Yes, that is the, that is the problem. It is so easily debunked. Why would you be suing journalists? Why would you go through the court system? Why are cops showing up at their doors? Just debunk it. It's so easy to debunk this story. Where were you for the first 30 years of your life if you were not living as an individual named John Michel, who very obviously, you know, would just walk out with you right now if he really was just your brother and people were getting it wrong. Next person writes, I'm French and people have claimed Brigitte is a man for years. That is creepy indeed. Yes, these people are correct in my view, and I want to add myself to the chorus of people that are making the story bigger because the implications are sinister. Lastly, this person writes, I'm a Frenchman and really thrilled about you explaining Brigitte Gate. The official Brigitte story is ludicrous. A 39-year-old teacher of a Catholic school seduced a 14-year-old boy in the same class with her daughter. This is a criminal offense in France, and she ends up a teacher in the best Catholic school in Paris, and he ends up the youngest associate at the Rothschilds Bank. Yes, a lot going on here. Indeed, sinister. And I just want to call any journalist who is reporting on the story and saying that there's nothing here and it's a far-right conspiracy theory is a liar, okay? It is is unbelievable. After you read this file, you are like, it is ridiculous to make a claim that this is just a far-right conspiracy theory. It, just show a picture of yourself in the first 30 years of your living. Show us your life. Show us your, your books, your yearbooks throughout the years. Oh, there's me in third grade, in fourth grade. Show it to us. This is not that hard. Stop gaslighting people. We are waking up to what is happening all across the world. And yes, it is in fact satanic. While experts anticipated rate cuts, inflation in the United States is still a significant economic concern. Think about it. The U.S. is in the hole by $34 trillion, and yet we keep printing money, which jacks up the prices that you pay every single day. You can bury your head in the sand, or you can do something about it. Diversify a portion of your savings into gold with Birch Gold Group. Gold has always acted as a hedge against inflation, and Birch Gold makes it easy to own. They'll help you convert your existing IRA or your 401k into a tax-sheltered IRA in gold, and you won't pay a penny out of pocket. Make gold part of your saving strategy and buy it from Birch Gold. They've been the exclusive gold partner of Daily Wire for over seven years, helping thousands of our listeners, and they can help you too. Text Candace to 989898 and get your free info kit on gold. Then talk to a precious metal specialist about protecting your savings from inflation with gold. Text Candace to 989898 now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, that is all the time that we have for today, but don't worry. We still have more to the week, which means we will see you tomorrow for a brand new episode.